Thank you for joining me. My name is Michael Voss of MP Consulting Incorporated, and I want to take a moment to introduce you. We're going to be speaking with Mayor Matt Ryan of Binghamton, the city of Binghamton, as well as listening in on the Binghamton City Council as they discuss uh, one of the initiatives for gun control that has become popular today uh, that has been around for a while, which is the Mayors Against Illegal Guns and some of the ideas that they are presenting. It's a coalition of 900 mayors across the country and they have some ideas on how to better help provide safety for the nation. Afterwards, we're going to be speaking with Mayor Matt Ryan briefly, uh, if we can, and we're going to be asking him a couple of questions uh, just to get some more information about that. We thank you for joining us and we hope that you're going to have a great day. Uh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, and obviously in the wake of the latest tragedy, uh, there's a real push on for um, something to be finally done after Sandy Hook. Uh, there's more than 800 mayors and more than 900,000 supporters uh, calling on Congress to uh, pass certain legislation, and the one that I'm actually going to be going to the uh, Innovation Mayors Conference next week, and on the 17th they're going to have a big uh, uh, you know, press event where all the mayors are get together on that day because it's also the, um, uh, the same day. The first 17th is the last last day of the Innovation Mayors Conference and the first day of the uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors, um, and basically. They really want to push for uh, three main things when they're asking may, um, mayors and councils all across the country to uh, pass resolutions in support of. Uh, the three main things are, and I, we've asked Jeremy to uh, reduce it to an ordinance, and I guess he went to print it, and we thought it would be done. But the three main things in it are uh, require criminal background checks for all gun sales. There's a, there's a big loophole in, in gun shows where it's very easy to get around the uh, background check and they want to really close those loopholes and make sure that everybody that buys a gun, including at gun, gun shows. Um, the other one is ban military style assault weapons and high capacity magazines. I think uh, a lot of people have stated that we, you know, we certainly don't want to infringe on people's Second Amendment rights, but uh, there's no real need for uh, citizens to have uh, high capacity magazines, um, and that's another thing. Uh, the other one is making gun trafficking a federal crime. Um, those are the three main at, uh, provisions of the uh, ordinance they'd be asking for. There's some other things that they would like to see the president do, which he can do on his own, and that's appoint an ATF director um, for whatever reason, probably, uh, again, because of politics, uh, there hasn't been a confirmed director for more than six years. Um, also, the ATF's budget has been slashed. Uh, um, there's also language compared to other federal agencies, I should say, leading it with far too resources to enforce uh, existing gun laws. Uh, the other one is prosecute prohibited purchases, purchasers who attempt to buy guns, ammunition, or high capacity magazines. Um, there's been a real lack of, again, enforcement by um, FBI or any, any, any agency to um, prosecute people who try to violate um, laws that are already on the books. Um, and then there's a requirement to, for federal agencies to report records to the NICS, um, and that would be, that's the National In Instance Background Check System. And um, for whatever reason, only very few agencies it's already a requirement, but very few agencies are living up to that requirement, so they want to make sure that uh, they uh, find ways to, uh, to uh, support, make that, uh, that provision much more enforced uh, and much more adhered to by all, all federal agencies, all agencies. And uh, there's a bunch of amendments, the TIA, HR, HRT restrictions, um, and uh, a lot of these things were passed during the 
that's riders on bills and uh, at the last minute in the late of night when people didn't know they were in there is it's pretty much uh, some crazy stuff that's on the books that the mayors against the legal guns would like to see uh, those amendments uh, ended. But the three main things, like I said, were um, well, we would actually be passing a resolution, hopefully, that would accuse all, include all these things. But uh, I, I think that they've been very well thought out, of, thought about by uh, a lot of people. Mayor Bloomberg is one of the leaders on this, and uh, been part of this coalition for quite a while. And it seems like there's the wherewithal to finally do something. I don't know, I did a little research during the time I was in this. 270 million guns floating around in our society. Uh, it's about, next closest nation has about um, one fifth that amount. And uh, you know, we want to be able to make sure that those guns are, we know who has them, especially illegal guns, and, and we make sure we try to keep guns out of the hands of people who aren't supposed to have them. That's yeah. what the, Seriously, no, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being serious about it, too. I'm not, I'm not trying to mock anything on this, or, but the people out there that have these illegal guns, do you? Well, I, I would suggest that maybe the bad people won't care, but make it harder for them to get guns, the bad people. That's the whole idea. And uh, for instance, for instance, uh, the first one I talked about is, you know, you can, almost anybody can get a gun through, uh, through a show through a gun show and they're very lax. So bad people can go to those gun shows and get guns. I understand, I understand what's going on. So and then and they shouldn't, those bad people, there's rules against former felons, different kinds of people who have certain, certain things on their record to prevent them from getting guns. So yes, I, I do think it will make I mean, a difference. Uh, yeah, if you take a look at the Webster, what happened out in Webster, the man was a convict. Right. He got a hold of guns. Oh, of and, course. And he, I mean, they're still going to be able to get a hold of the gun if they really want to that. Well, I, I do believe that we have to start someplace. Oh, I, I'm not denying that. And this is the, this is the starting place. Uh, if you, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of democracies out there. Some people say we're going to, I mean, there's some pretty crazy stuff out there where people think that if we didn't all have so many guns, we, you know, you know what they say. But, there's plenty of democracies that have, I, mean, I think Iceland had zero gun deaths last year. Zero. Uh, many, many countries have very, very low. Like England only had 13 uh, gun deaths. Uh, those are pretty big countries that control their guns and know their government is taking over. Their, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I think that we need to start controlling the flow of guns much better than we did. We used to have, especially the, uh, I mean, it was the law of the land, the high capacity magazines and, and assault weapons uh, around, were um, banned for a while and then they, for whatever reason, ran out. You know why? It, you know, you know, well, I, I, I agree, I mean, nobody needs an assault weapon. 500 bullets in it. Well, the other part of this, don't forget, is all the things together. It's prosecute those who attempt to buy guns, ammunition, high capacity magazines, put some teeth into the laws we have and make sure that those people who aren't supposed to have guns here, trying to get them, get severely prosecuted. Uh, you know, it's just like uh, anything. I mean, if you look at anything we've tried to prevent, smoking is way down in this country. <laughs> compared to what it was when before we had laws restricting young people because and, and advertising to young people there's a lot of things that have worked along these lines they take time to work but you got to start someplace and I think this is a very reasonable group of, um, of uh, requirements to so, so I, I have a question for you um, so you have I actually, you know, th I, I agree that something's got to be done. And I also agree that nobody needs to have an assault weapon or a high capacity magazine. 
And so I could be with you all the way on this. But I do have a question because there's one thing that I didn't read in the email, maybe it was there and I just missed it, that sort of stopped me dead. And that's the very first paragraph. Um, requiring renewal of handgun permits every five years. I guess I'm wondering, what other states, do you have any idea, do other states require that? Because that sounds, I don't know, that, you know, that's, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm with you on everything else, that's the one thing that just gave me pause and that I have to think about. And it's in here, and it's the very first paragraph, and it's the last resolve. So I'm just wondering if what that's based on, if there's, if it's Well, New York State else. already has. I mean, it's not that easy to get no, it's in New not. York, except that. Well, that's good. So why, gonna, that's why I, I guess. I'm going to bring question, up, but I know. I guess that's why I'm questioning the five-year renewal. Well, I can think of a number of instances of, I'm not going to bring them up here, and I'll talk to you about it personally, but I can think of another number of instances uh, in the last couple of years where people have had a lot of guns and um, legal guns, and we, after looking at them so can I. for certain instances, yeah. we, we thought they shouldn't that's have guns. Right. So I think that's the rationale behind it. If you really want to, uh, especially this is for a carry permit, yeah, I think they should be. I mean, if we have to renew our license, driver's license, why should Well, I get, that's why I'm asking the question, because I don't necessarily even have a problem with the renewing thing. It's the five years. I mean, I'm wondering what other states are doing it, where the five years came from. I mean, I don't have to renew a driver's that. license except every 10 years. I could ask that question, but I, um, I think it's... It's the only thing in here that makes me the slightest bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, New York State's got the toughest, some of the toughest gun laws some in the, the country, I would imagine. Country, yeah. We do. So, yeah. Well, again, this is a, don't forget, this is a mayor's national against handguns, right. so we might have some more restrictive things than this already. Uh, but you don't renew it. Well, I mean, all this is, but don't forget, is, is a, a resolution supporting these ideas. We're not passing any laws. No, I understand that, and I want to support it. I really do, but I sort of need that. I need to have that answer because okay. that does make me uncomfortable. I understand, you know, personally, certainly, I know reasons why it should be too, but I just wonder where it comes from. Okay. And I will ask that question. Okay, other questions? Thank you for bringing this. Well, actually, it's not asking, if you read this carefully, I think it's not saying we should change that. What it is saying is uh, that we should, because that's a fact, that, the way I read it is because the that's last, a fact. In the last result, we want to urge result. the governor of the state of New York to enact sensible regulations that require renewal of hand oh, okay. They're not, It's not required now. Okay. I, and that I knew, I, but I, the way I was reading it first, I thought right. that because of that, we want to see, especially want to see systematic background checks and stuff like that. But I, that, that, I'm all, that I'm all for. Okay. It's this renewal thing. Again, it's uh, again, it's um, like you said. We're not certainly. The, we're just uh, going to pass a, a law that I mean, we don't have the authority to uh, regulate guns. I don't think, but you know. So it's, it's just. Thank you. We will. I'll ask about that.